and welcome to an early morning episode. In this one I finally get to prune my apple trees. So right now we are in about a week and a couple of days away from spring, which is a little late to be honest. Ideally we would do this in January or February, but the buds haven't broken yet. There's no green showing, so it's not too late. We're still good, so I'm going to do it now. Now these trees are one year old, which means I've had them for one year. Um, it, I think when I got them, they were probably about a year old you know, for the nursery to grow them because obviously they have to get them up to size. So they're about two years old in total now. It is pretty normal for your tree to be about one or two years old. Now as far as pruning goes, there's a couple different choices. Most commonly for apples and pears, you would prune them to what's called a central leader, which is where you have a single trunk coming up and then anywhere from three to five branches coming off horizontally where all your fruit is going to be on. These branches are ideally spaced out pretty evenly, um, so let's say two or three inches or about 10 centimeters apart, and so they all get their own light and they all face a different direction, so like north, south, southeast, west, you know, they all get their own little space, all facing out a different direction all around the center of the tree from the center of the tree. Alternatively, you could also prune them, and this is most common for stone fruits, in something that's called a vase shape, or also called an open center. This, what you do is you lop off the top of the tree, usually about 30 centimeters or about a foot off the ground. So like say, right here, with maybe a branch left over. They will all come off down here, about three or four branches, shooting up again spaced out evenly but they're all coming from the same the same point that causes problems when you have snow or anything like that weighing down on those branches that's why it's not ideal these branches they might snap off so what I'm going to be doing is pruning my apple trees into something that's called a modified central leader I got this idea from Stephen Edholm from Skill Cult so I'll give credit where credit is due I was always going to do a central leader, but a modified central leader sounds even better. This is where you're combining the central leader and the vase shape combined. You have your branches coming out evenly along the trunk and they're all go growing up to kind of compete with that central leader so you don't get that too much of that apical dominance which is apples and pears like to do. So you have about three or four branches ideally coming out horizontally growing up all competing then for that for that main apical dominance which it helps to keep your tree small and I'll explain and, do and document and show you how I'm going to do this as we go along so with that said let's get down to the first tree which is my calypso so with the one-year-old apple tree there's really not a whole lot of pruning that you have to do it's more so just guiding it into the form that you're trying to train your fruit tree in and as you do this every year you'll find that there's just, it's just maintaining the, the shape that you have set up for your tree. And it becomes very little work, really. So the first branch, it's pretty obvious. You can see it's swooping down. Ideally, this tree was swooping over a little bit more. And I had it tied up at the top here to kind of straighten it out because it was very, it was leaning over a lot. And that caused this branch, which was horizontal, to be very swooping. So I'm gonna correct that first off. And how we're gonna do that is by pruning it down to a bud that it comes out more horizontally. And ideally it's on the top here so it'll also swoop up a little bit. So this bud right here fits that bill perfectly. So I'm just gonna prune it down to this bud, which will take off all that swooping motion that we've got going on currently. So here we go. We're going to leave a little bit of a stub right there. Just like that. Takes off all that swooping action. That we don't want. There's only one other branch that I want to prune on this tree and that's at the top. So let me show you that now. So as you can see, I still have it tied up. Although I could probably remove that after this year. As you can also see, I've got way more than the three to five branches that I was suggesting. I'm not really worried about it. I'm going to do my own interpretation of it. I feel like as long as it has 
you know, light, then it should be fine. Then it will be fine. I'm gonna, ex I guess it's gonna be a little bit of an experiment, but I know it'll be fine. A lot of this is also fruiting wood, like this. Back here, there's some fruiting wood. I've even got some up here and down here. And I obviously don't wanna remove that down here. I obviously don't wanna remove that, so. So all branches I'll be leaving, but I'm gonna be maintaining it over the years and I'll be taking you guys along. Now, the branch that I was talking about is that little fork that you have here. And this is kind of what I'm talking about with guiding the tree. You can see that I've got two branches coming off of the same area, which is not ideal. That's gonna swell up. So you're just gonna to wanna to remove one of them. However, if you look a little further, you can see that this branch is already here, which currently is being shared right above this one. So that's not good. These two are gonna compete for light. So ideally what I wanna do is remove this one and then just let this one take over because this has more of its own area. You know, this one is a little, is going on in a slightly different angle than this one down below here. So that's the type of things I would want you to think about when you're making these pruning cuts. Now, I'm gonna prune this, which might start sparking little buds and growth happening at the cut point here, which you're gonna to wanna to take out when the time comes. You could just rub off the little, little buds there. Leave a little bit of a stub. And there we go. So there's a little bit of a stub there. Just a little bit of a stub. It's gonna have more branch spark out. And we're gonna to wanna to remove those because we already have a main branch in this one. That's already gonna be the main scaffold. So we don't need that branch, any branches beside it. So that's pretty much this tree done. It's it's very minor, like I said. It's, it's just small changes that you're making to the tree. So let's go on to the next one now. So this is my Odisso apple. And I'm really glad that I have multiple trees to prune because it really allows me to show you some of the different scenarios that you're gonna run into when you're pruning your trees. So with this one, there's really only one branch that I wanna remove. And that's the fact that they have two central leaders. You don't want that. You want just a single central leader so that you, know, you just have one single trunk coming up where all the energy can go into. Having two is not good. It's just gonna compete. They're just gonna compete together and you just don't want that. Ideally, you just have one where all the energy can go into. I'm gonna leave this branch right here. This could be a side branch. Or alternatively, really, what you could do is if you didn't, so let's say I didn't want this branch here. What I could do is prune it off right there it would then have a new leader here to take over rather than this one. But I don't mind this branch being here, so I can just prune this lower one off. And that is what I'm gonna do. So same thing with the other one. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a stub here and any branches that are gonna come off of it, I might remove. We'll just take it as it happens. So a bit of a stub. Ooh. It's kind of hard to do one-handed. But there it goes. And that's really all I want to do to this tree. One single leader. Alternatively, if I didn't want it to be this high, I could take down this height down a little bit. This might be too high. Ah. Uh, I don't mind my tree being about seven or eight foot high. So I'm gonna leave it in this case, but you might decide that you want to uh, reduce the height on this a little bit. In which case you would just take it down to one of these buds that grows a favorable direction so it can take over. You know what, actually, I might just take it off a little bit because you're gonna get, I'm going to prune this off and I'm gonna have essentially a second row of scaffolds 
that are going to be the canopy of the tree up here. That's part of the modified central leader um, technique there is to have your scaffolds down low and have your central leader all the way to tippy top have a second um, second set of scaffolds that are gonna keep it small. So I thought I could have it to be a little bit taller but you're gonna have to take that second scaffold in the top here you have to keep that in mind. So I actually will have to prune this off because if I have a scaffold up top here that's gonna be way too tall even for me. So I'm gonna prune it down a little bit and then see what I go. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take it down. This is probably about two meters, so about seven foot. Then you have to add on another foot for the second uh, set of scaffolds. So I'm gonna take it down to here. Fair chunk. We'll start with that. You can always adjust later. All right. So here we go. Boom. And that's it. So yeah, so this is gonna, this is gonna subdivide all along here over the course of uh, the growing season because you know what they do is they send up a long straight shoot and then they subdivide later on. So we'll see where the branches come out and uh, next year we'll take the next step. On to the next tree. So the last tree here, it's kind of meshed in with this red maple here, but it's the same thing. You can see here, this, this main scaffold, it's coming out way too vertical, okay? You can see how it's not coming out horizontal like at all, like maybe this branch down here is actually a perfect example. It comes out nice and horizontal. This one really wants to be the main leader. I don't want it to be the main leader because I already have a main leader. So this one has to come out. That's what's gonna be first operation here get in there prune it off and you can just see how tall it got hello kitty <laughs> yeah so it just got way too tall um, I'm gonna be shooting for about seven foot as well and then that extra scaffold, the last top scaffold will be another foot. So that'll make it eight feet, which, you know, I'm relatively tall, so that should be comfortable for me. Obviously, you can adjust this to whatever is comfortable for you. This is about seven foot. Give a little bit of a stub here. Take all that top growth off. Here we go. Boom. done so that's all the pruning I'll be doing on my apple trees this year it's not very much like I said in the first year I'm not you won't have to do a whole lot and if you just do it every year it'll just become just maintaining it's very easy all right guys so that's all the pruning I'm gonna be doing this year on these apple trees and um, yeah, I really feel like this modified central leader is going to be the best way to go about it for these apple trees. I just think it's going to be a much more natural looking tree rather than, you know, the pretty uh, tailored and catered to um, trees that you see in a normal orchard. I feel like this is gonna look more natural. And I also think it's gonna be more healthy in the long run because it is, you know, there's more, more branching and better branching and all that stuff going out and not like the vase shape i just i'm not a big fan of it even when i do get stone fruit at some point i'll probably be pruning them in a similar fashion to be honest and uh, we'll just kind of see how that goes so i appreciate you coming along thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one Tot the volgende keer.